Robert, you've been running now for a year now, District 20 against Debbie Washington Schultz. Uh, who else is running in the race with you? Any new uh, primary challengers? Well, we have Dennis Lamb, who's been with me for about the same period of time. He announced around the same period, around February last year. And in the last couple of weeks, we have a couple new contenders out there. I think uh, Karen Harrington and uh, uh, Mr. Dorkovich. Uh, now, in lieu of what happened in District 19, uh, in, after the primary, whoever wins the primary, do you support that, if it's not you, do you support that primary uh, candidate? Well, absolutely. And we're at a crossroads in this country that is way more important than the individual. It's the people's seat. And we need to get somebody that's conservative, that's, that's fiscally oriented, that understands the Constitution in every seat of that house. So, absolutely, I will support anybody that wins the primary. Now, we're, we're all shoving off to CPAC this week. Are you guys going to CPAC? Yes, we are. Uh, any particular plans for CPAC? Well, we have a full agenda, actually. We're meeting with various seated congresspeople, as well as folks that are high up on the NRC. Um, we're not really at a liberty to exclude uh, or expose every person that we're seeing, but it's, it's going to be a good week. Now, I want to ask you about uh, illegal immigration. Uh, where do you stand on amnesty for illegal immigrants? As far Absolutely. As Who've been here illegally, and because that's that's going to be that's going to be coming up in the forefront soon, as far as uh, people supporting amnesty. We know the Obama administration and Debbie Wasserman Schultz both support it. Well, you have to look at it two different ways. One is the folks that are still continually coming across our border. Absolutely, they broke our they broke our laws. They should be deported immediately. And then you have the folks that have been here for many many years, possibly a whole generation. But the fact of the matter is, they they broke our laws as well. So, what do you think uh, would be a remedy? If they've been here for 20 some odd years, and they've, they've become fixtures of the, of, the, of the community, what could be done? Should we send them all back? What could be done with that? Well, we know that Americans and America itself is one of the most generous and compassionate countries on the planet. I've traveled extensively and I believe that we are the most lax in allowing people to stay here. However, I believe that if someone has broken our laws, there, there's got to be some penalty to be paid. Now, uh, Big issue now is jobs. I don't buy this whole 9.7 percent. Uh, what's what's the rate here in Florida now? Well, they say it's 9.7 nationally, but I think South Florida is more like 10 and a half. I think it's a lot higher. I think they're really fudging the numbers. What's your take on that? Do you think that the numbers are the the, the percentage is accurate, or is, is it a lot higher? It's always interesting how they uh, how they can paint a picture that they want to paint. I believe that the, uh, the folks of, uh, that have just uh, applied for unemployment is around 9.7%, but what they're not including is the folks that have fallen off the other end of the rolls, the people that are no longer collecting unemployment. And if you add that 3 or 4% and add to the uh, folks that never qualified for unemployment, the folks that are self-employed, that's another 3 or 4%, as well as the folks that are underemployed, you're closer to 22, 23%. In other words, one out of four Americans are severely affected by this recession. So, you being a small business owner, what can we do to remedy this problem? If you go to Congress tomorrow, what can you do to remedy this problem? Great question. Give me some solutions. I appreciate that because <laughs> one thing that frustrated me the most in the last election cycle is people would stand up on their soapbox and complain about what was happening, but never give in a viable solution to it. There's actually four things, if not five, that are severely impairing any small or large business owner in hiring anybody today. Number one, you have a president that is hell-bent on spending. He's going to spend us into oblivion. He just passed another $1.6 billion budget. That's up another $300 billion from the year before. Somebody's going to have to pay that back. And there's only two kinds of taxes. One, that they're going to get you with the IRS, and the other is through inflation. They're either going to print the money. So any small businessman is going to be impacted by that and knows that their future is going to be impeded. Second is that our president, even though that Nancy Pelosi said just two weeks ago she didn't have the votes for health care, our president mentioned in his State of Union speech that he wants to continue on down that track. That's another expense to a business person, large or small. The third thing, they're now readdressing the cap and trade issue. We all know what that's going to cost us in South Florida. An independent study says an additional 2,200 jobs will be lost in my district alone if that's passed. Now, all these initiatives are supported by Debbie and voted by Debbie. She supported the, uh, the stimulus, she supported the budget, she supported the health care, and she enthusiastically supported the cap-and-trade bill.